Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect Systems video show coverage for the Hi-Fi Show Live 2018. Make sure to go and visit our website for Hi-Fi news, reviews and more. We'd like to thank our show coverage sponsors, Telerium Q Cables, for helping us make this show coverage possible. Okay, hi. Um, it's a bit noisy, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm Paul Taylor, um, owner and developer of Songcom Music Tagger, which is a tool for organising and fixing your music collection. But um, then we started digitising our music collection and our music libraries got much larger. And now people didn't necessarily just listen to their favourite album as an album, they might create playlists consisting of songs by different artists and different genres. And people started searching for music and searching by different themes, like searching by the year or the type of music or the record label, all kinds of different things, and started browsing for music. Um, so it then became a lot more complicated. And because you were no longer constrained about and having your CDs or your, your records there in front of you, you had access to a whole wider variety of music and it became a lot larger. So, a lot of opportunities, but a lot of problems with these larger music collections. Um, when you uh, ripped your music to your computer or if you downloaded music from a source, the music could be stored in many different audio formats. The collections got much larger and the original metadata varies considerably depending on where you've got it from and actually the record companies themselves don't really have a handle on metadata um, very inconsistent throughout throughout the industry there's no comprehensive standard that defines how information should be stored and what and what needs to be available actually trying to manually add your metadata very time consuming it's okay if you've got maybe a few hundred cds that's manageable but once it gets larger than that it's far too time consuming and even if you do it right correctly in the first time if at a later stage you decide you want to make a change to how you organize things the idea of going back to the ones you've already sorted out you know it's a, you know, it's a bit of a nightmare really so what I wanted to ask you guys was, first of all, um, I've been talking about metadata, that's the information that we store about the music, such as the artist, such as the album, and that can be stored inside the music files itself. But also, when you look at your music on your computer, for example, you have the file name. And the file name kind of stores some metadata as well. But I'm not really talking about it. What I was wondering is, um, do you all understand the concept of a separate metadata, or do some people just use the actual file name and find their music just by looking at folders and file names? Um, I, I was just wondering if anybody didn't use metadata and relied pu purely on folders and file names. No, everyone's using metadata. And I, 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 I use J River and I rely on their default settings to create the files when I rip CD, for example. Yeah. Um, but occasionally I find myself having to manually yeah. yeah. the metadata, which I do with some pre tool I downloaded. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I was going to ask is having. Say, you, say you're using a, very, a tool to convert your music, to put your music on your system. Once it's done, is it done? Or do you have to go back to it and make changes and make improvements? And these are various other tools that all edit metadata in some way. Um, I just wondered, do many of you use DB Power? Yeah. Um, MP3 tag, um, iTunes, um, Bliss. That's, okay. So there's, there's, yeah, there's a number of tools, and they'll 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 do things in a diff, in a, in a different way. But um, this is a song con con concept. Is but it should be able, it should be possible to auto match and auto identify most of your music rather than having to manually fix it. Um, 
when we do that, we want to do it in a way which makes it consistent over your whole music collection. And we want to fix the metadata that's stored in the files themselves. So you use the song console to fix your files, and then your files are fixed, and whatever you're playing them on, that information is available. I mean, that contrasts with something like um, iTunes, for example, stores some of the metadata in the files, and some is only stored in the iTunes library. So if you then play your music outside of iTunes, that information is no longer available. Things like um, play counts or album artwork are tied into using iTunes. If you look at a tool like Rune, what Rune does is it identifies your music, it displays information about your music in Rune, but no changes are made to the files themselves. Sort of partial metadata is uh, with name systems. Um, so they read the metadata in the files themselves. <coughs> but for WAV files, they don't actually store the metadata in the WAV files themselves, they're stored in separate files. And I think that was purely an historical thing, because years ago, there was no clear definition of how to store metadata for WAV files. So they created their own system. But there has been a system for quite a few years now. So that means that if you if you if you uh, if you've got your, your files on a wrap on a name system and then you transfer them to somewhere else, you lose all your metadata for WAV files. It's okay for FLAC and other formats, but it's not kept in the files itself. So we the important thing is to put that information in the files. And we need it to be rich, comprehensive metadata. A simple album artist title is not enough now. People generally want more information to be able to search by more dimensions. Um, and we want to give you enough control because everybody's slightly different and there's not a single perfect way to store, to organise your files and store your metadata. So you have to have some control over that. Um, music collections are very valuable, very personal, so we have an audit of all the changes that we've made and all the changes we've made are stored in a database so if at a later stage you want, you decide you don't like a change you can undo those changes to go back to what you had before. And the key thing is it's stored in a database so we're not asking you to check all the changes that we've made we say we well, trust us changes will be fine but if you find a problem later on you can change it you don't have to check and review everything at the time so i'm just going to do a very brief song kong introduction then i'm going to go through some common metadata problems um, oh, just a little bit more information. So one, one way it does the song identification is it uses something called acoustic fingerprints. That means it actually listens to the music in the song and creates a fingerprint of the sound and it can use that to do a lookup. So that's very accurate. Um, I have gone through the other ones. So. Um, a few other features. We also have a, something called a status report that you can use in your existing music collection to see exactly what metadata you have. We also have something called delete duplicates to find duplicate songs, and that could be over duplicate songs in the same albums or duplicate songs just based on the songs only. Um, we solve lots of issues with classical metadata. We've worked closely, I don't know if you've heard of Minim Server. Yeah. We've worked quite closely with Minim Server to um, solve problems with classical music, high quality artwork, and we also do add acoustic metadata so we can add things like BPM and uh, the main key of the music. So it's available for the Ma for the Melco Melco N1. It's also available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Synology, and QNAP NAS servers. Um, for a regular desktop like a Windows PC or an Apple Mac, we have a regular desktop user interface. But we also have a remote interface which allows you to control the program completely via a web browser. So systems that don't have a screen such as a Melco, you install the software on the Melco, but then you can control via a web browser 
running on your computer, but also running on your iPad or phone, smartphone. So you can control it any way you like. So, three basic steps to improve metadata. Select your music folder and run the fixed songs task. Review the options. We've got a nice set of defaults, but there are options to allow you to configure it just as you like. Wait for completion and a detailed report to create it showing exactly what has changed. So that's the startup screen. You see the icons at the top are the main tasks. You select your music folder. Review the options. There's the options on the basic tab. There's seven, seven different tabs. So there is a lot of information, a lot of settings you can configure if required. And when it's complete, it creates a report showing exactly how things have been identified and exactly what changes have been made. So, I'm now going to try and go through some of the problems that people can have with their music collection. So, going back to when we had physical, uh, physical releases, people would, people would understand if the album artist or the artist is sometimes slightly different on different releases, but it's clear to you, you understand, oh, this is the same person. And sometimes people would take that a bit further. So, if you think of Prince, for a long time he was Prince, then he was just a symbol, then he became formally known as Prince. Now, Prince fan, you realise they're all the same person. But when you digitise your music and you're using various tools to um, look up your music, they don't realise that. They think they're different people. So what you end up with in your when you're browsing is you've got uh, some of his albums will be under print, some will be under someone else, some will be someone else. So it's, it's difficult to find all the music. And if you use a tool such as DB Power, what that does, it looks up a CD, looks up a CD based on the track times. So there's no information stored within the CD itself, but you can use the track times, the, the, the track times of all the tr songs on the out on the album, and independently of any other CDs by the same artist. So you don't get the consistency because everything is is just a, is a a one-off a one-off lookup. You can manually get it, but that that becomes hard work. So. The difference with Songkong is it understands artists as entities. So the database we use, we're not just looking up an artist name for that release. We're looking up that release by this artist. And every artist has something that we call canonical name. That means that's their main name. So even if they use a different name on a different release, that's their main name. So we go back to Prince. His canonical name is Prince. On some releases it's called Prince. On some releases it's called Symbol. But we know that it's always the same person. So we can always use Prince when we add the metadata into your music files. So therefore, when you then browse your music by Prince, you have all these albums in one place. Um, we also can deal with um, non English scripts. I mean, does, does anybody know who that artist is there? Well, I say artist, that's composer, that's Tchaikovsky. But, but, but you know, unless you speak Russian, you probably wouldn't recognize that. But we, we understand that um, we have, that, we have a, an English version of all artists, so we can always use the English name. Or if you want, you can stick to their their native language, but it allows you to keep it consistent throughout. Another problem is artist collaborations, so an album or a track performed by two artists together. So many tools we just read, so we read that uh, Johnny Cash and Jim Carter as a single artist, call Johnny Cash and Duke Carter, not two distinct people. So then when you browse your music, you have songs where Johnny Cash has collaborated with someone else to be listed separately to his own music, that he works on his own. Um, 
we have the same problem with featured artists. So, because we understand that artists are entities, when we do the lookup, we actually realise it's two separate artists. So instead of storing Johnny Cash and June Carter, we can store this song is by Johnny Cash and separately June Carter. Then that allows you to browse by Johnny Cash and the song will show up, browse by June Carter and the song will come up. Um, and we can do the same thing with featured artists, but going one step further, um, we can also ignore featured artists. So you might you might have a number of albums or a number of tracks by someone you really like. Some of those tracks might um, also feature another artist, but actually you're not really interested in that. The reason why you've got the album is because of the main person. So we can actually say, well, these are featured artists. We're going to drop that information because it's not actually help helpful to us. Uh, you probably can't read that, but there's there's the options in the uh, in the interface. So I'll just read them out. Romanize non-Latin script artist names where possible. Use standard artist name instead of name on cover. When tracks control featured artists, add all artists to the field, or you can add only add the main artist to the field. Mm -hmm. right. Problem three, are you familiar with the concept of sort names? So if you, if you go if you go back to the physical um, the physical records or the record shop idea, you would look at, you would look for the Beatles under B for Beatles, not T for the. But you still call them the Beatles. So the concept is you have a display name, which is their, what they're called, and a sort name, which is the, which is the name you use to find them which tends to, in the case of um, bands, tends to drop things like the, and in the case of individuals, the sort name is normally by their surname, but the display name is their first name and then surname. Um, so it's very hard work and laborious trying to, en trying to enter sort names, and things like the Beatles, you can guess what the sort name is, but some people it's not so obvious, so Joskin de Prez, Joskin from the place Prez, so his sort name is Joskin and his main name is Joskin, and that might not be so obvious. So again, we understand entities, and with each entity we have a sort name, so that means we can have consistent sort names for all your artists, and we don't just restrict that to artists, we, can, we also apply that to composers, conductors, orchestras, choirs, any kind of performer. Everybody has a sort name. So now, you can display as Kate Bush, but sort as Bush Tom Kate. Okay, let's move away from artists. Um, so, as I, was, as I was saying earlier, um, you, so say you've written CD to your computer, CD doesn't store any metadata, no metadata in that CD at all. Um, you can use a tool such as the DB Power App to look up the CD and basically it does a count of how many tracks are on the CD and works out the length of every track on that CD and then creates a checksum based on that information and then looks up that information in the database. So that can mean that actually you can coincidentally find completely the wrong album. It just happens to be an album by someone completely different who happens to have the same track length and the same number of tracks. It's nothing to do with that's why you sometimes get, you know, why is it why is it brought this album back? It's nothing to do nothing like my album. But you've probably got the same number of track lengths. Um, also it only works with albums. It, can't, it doesn't work with singles or EPs or track or releases with only half a dozen tracks because it's just there's just too many there'd be too many albums with the same length tracks. So you can't get a match. And 
it's disc based. So, say you have a multi disc release, two discs, looks up disc one, it might, it might find that disc one as part of the two disc release, or it might just think that is a standalone disc. And the same with disc two, it doesn't, it doesn't understand you're looking at two CDs of the same release, they're just two individual things. It might find disc one but not find disc two, it might find disc two but not disc one. Um, because of that, you know, when you have multi-disc releases, you, you, need to, you need to set not just your track numbers, you need to set your disc numbers and disc total fields correctly, but it tends not to do that. Um, and if there's mistakes, you haven't really got a way to fix them. But with Song Kong, we actually match the releases, not discs. So we understand that all files in a folder could be a multi-disc album, and that subfolders are likely to represent discs with in the multi-disc album. Because we're using acoustic fingerprinting rather than just looking at track lengths, we actually actually identify that this is the same, this is the right song. And because we're using acoustic fingerprints, it works for releases of any length, i.e. singles. Combining this with existing metadata, we do use track lengths as well and folder structure, we can ensure that we've got a very good match. And we make sure we add all the disk information fields. Now, another issue you might have is you might on purpose have multiple copies of the same album. Now they might be slightly different versions of the same album, so you may have a non-high-res and then a high-res version of the same album. Or you may have um, you may have a lossless version, and you may also have a lossy version that you need to maybe play on a car or an MP3 player. So you may have multiple versions of albums that way. There's a JJ Chaos JJ Chaos album five, which had um, different content in different markets. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's identified as the same album. Different tracks. Yeah, so the, so the, the metadata you get with, um, with most of these tools is the same metadata. It doesn't, I, you know, I mean, I don't have the problem because I've only got one one copy of it. But I've heard other people with <coughs> the, the American issue is different from the UK issue. Is different from the oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's another issue that we deal with. But yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yes, you can see why vinyl is much better, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> Um, or you may have you may have a single or an album. They may both have exactly the same name. So anyway, the point is, you with most tools, you just you could end up with basically having the same album name and the same metadata repeated, and then you end up getting multiple copies of your music mixed in together because there's nothing to differentiate. It. So when we identify a release, we also know what sort of release it is so what we can do is say most of your releases are albums but for all your singles will add single to the album name so it's clear that you, these are your singles or these are your EPs or this is a soundtrack we can also identify when your copy is a high res in a high res format like 24 bits for example and we can add HD to the name so you can you can clearly differentiate between your HD and non HD or we can also add the audio format to the album name so it's clear when you've got duplicates you can keep them separate um, we can also if you've got a if you've got a box set so you might have a box set, and your box set might be a collection of all the al all the original albums by a particular artist. You probably want to see the name of those original albums as well as it being part of a box set, and that's done by something called the disc subtitle. And we can also retrieve that information and store that as well. Um, that's just another screenshot of the options that, I, that I've been talking about. So, as I've been saying, we use 
entities and our, our main our main tool that we use to look up is the music range database and artists and release entities it's kind of become de facto standard it's used by bbc last fm google amazon spotify um, it's the authoritative standard now for music for artists for getting distinct artists because you use IDs. We don't have this problem of multiple artists with the same name, which ones which. Um, but we use Music Brain, but we also use Discogs, and we combine them into one database, and we can cross-reference. So that gives us a much larger data set than just using Music Brains, but still being able to use Music Brains IDs. And the data could be the data in music brains can be edited as well. So if there are if you do come across a problem, which is quite rare, but if you do you can actually fix it and then you, that will sort that will that will then filter down to your music rather than being stuck with every time you do a lookup it brings back the wrong data which can happen with some systems. Um, now another thing is um, Say you've, you've burnt your, you've got your CDs on your computer, and then you're, then you're you, at a later stage you're trying to use a tool to automatically identify your music. The tools tend to fall, fall into two, two camps. Either they try and find the album, they try and match the songs to an album, and if they match the songs to your album, all well and good. If they can't match all the songs to your album, that's it, there's no match. Or, they're not really bothered about albums, they're just trying to identify your songs. And this is certainly a case of tools that use fingerprinting, because the fingerprinting can identify the individual track. But it doesn't, in itself, tell you what album that track belongs to, because so many, so many songs are now available in more than one album different versions of the same album, compilation albums by the artist, various compilation albums. Most tracks are available on more than one album, and fingerprinting alone won't tell you the correct one. So then you can end up with, okay, it's identified my songs, but it's totally messed up my album structure, because it's, met, it's matched these songs to some obscure, um, various artist album that I don't have, so it just happens to have those, some of those songs. So, what we do with Songcom is we do both. We try very hard to find a good album match. So we, we group songs logically, we try and find the album match. If we can't find the album match, but the fingerprinting allows us to identify the song, then we do what we call a song only match. And with a song only match, we just update the song specific fields. So we can update the title of the song, we can still update that, because the title doesn't change. We can update the track artist, but we won't start messing with album fields. So that improves your metadata without breaking up any existing album metadata that you've got that we, we, could, that we were unable to match because we could not find the album that the song belonged to. Okay, so we've worked very hard to improve tagging for classical music. So classical music has lots of features that means it has to be handled differently to pop and rock music. Um, for starters, there's not really a single artist that you would say is the main artist for the release. So we've, you've got to consider the conductor, the performers and the orchestras. The composer has probably got nothing to do with the recording. He, he, he wrote the music, but he may have died long ago. So the composer may be the most important aspect, but is not necessarily the artist of the album. Now, most tools and, and databases have really been designed to make a lot of music in mind, um, which is a problem. And another area with, with classical music is we're not just interested in songs on an album, we're interested in uh, movements within words on an album. So, one, one issue 
is how do you know if this album you've got is a classical album? So the main databases, including Music Brains and Discogs and AMD, they don't they don't really indicate if an album is a classical album. So you don't know if it's classical. It's hard to adjust your rules to do the different things for a classical album. We've, we've added an algorithm to some sort to help identify classical. So, considers things that known classical composers, conductors and performers, identifying works and movements and titles, known classical record labels, um, so we do various things so that we so then we've got a very good a very good chance that we correctly identify as being classical or not non-classical. And there's always some edge cases, it's always difficult you can't get it right for every single one because sometimes there's disagreement. So we also have a way to allow you to specifically say actually this your this album you're saying is classical isn't, so treat it as non-classical. Um, so yeah, with classical releases, what should the artist be set to? How do we get this other information, such as orchestra or performers, and how do we treat tracks by works and movements? Because we because we've identified whether it's a classical release or not, we can then configure the track artist differently. So we can we can say actually instead of making the track, we can actually make the track track artists, various combinations of the performers or orchestras found on the release, we can, we can let you choose. Um, and we properly categorise everybody, so try and, instead of trying to shoehorn everybody into a limited set of fields, we have a set of fields for the performer, the orchestra, the choir, the conductor, the composer. So if we put that information into those separate fields, you can then use your browsing tool to actually browse by those fields. Similarly, we have fields for work and movement and movement number and opus and so on. Um, can't really too small to see that, isn't it? But that's just an example of some of the options that we have for, for classical music. Now I'm just going to go on to Minim Server for a moment. So Minim Server is a UPMP server that works for both systems, including the Melco. And by default, the Melco comes with Twonky, but you can also configure it to use Minim Server. And we've, I've worked with Minim Server to get the best solution. And the good thing about Minim Server is you can configure it to use any metadata. So if you store the metadata in your files, you can make Minim Server display that metadata. Very configurable. So I'll just give you one example. Um, so this is a, this is an album, an, a classical album with, with two movements. And without movements and works, you just get a list of tracks which make it cluttered and there's no differentiation between the two different works. But when we add the information from Songkong, it now becomes less cluttered because we can now group at the work level, which is the higher one here. So there's two different works, and then you can drill down to a particular work and look at the movements within the work. And then you can also play by works instead of playing by whole albums. You can just browse by the works. Um, we also can index by instruments. So Music Brain stores uh, the instruments that have been played, used on particular pieces of music. So we can also browse by that. Uh, we also use a thing that crowdsources your acoustic metadata. So if you've identified that song in Music Brains, Music Brains allows you to um, upload metadata. You can analyze the songs and, up and upload this acoustic metadata for those songs. And then we can use that metadata in Songcom. Um, so the other thing I was going back to is you've got metadata and you've got file names. And file names can store 
basic information about your music. They can store anything you like, it's not that useful to store too much information. So we've been talking about fixing the metadata and um, we've been talking about fixing the metadata and that will um, allow you to browse things. But storing, but you also want to keep the file name up to date as well. And Song Kong can. Song Kong allows you to comprehensively browse your file name by your metadata. Next year, the Hi Fi Show Live moves to Royal Ascot, where even bigger and better things are being planned. See you all there next year.